Hello everyone, William here. I just had another great conversation with another guest. Would you like to come in and listen in on the conversation we had? By the way, feel free to share it with anyone you feel may find it of interest. Come on, let's go listen in now. So Julia, welcome back to the studio. Thank it's uh, great to see you again and to have you back in the studio. Thanks for reaching out to me again and I'm wanting to have a conversation. I was uh, very much looking forward to it. Now, the last time that we spoke, uh, I noticed on the table here that you had a piece of rubber hose mm -hmm. and uh, I failed to bring it up and I'd really like to hear what that hose is for. <laughs> this hose helps me to remember but also to describe how the body works. Okay. And so at four weeks post conception the body is a zygote. Okay. A zygote is just one of those scientific names to describe what's going on, uh, how far along it has progressed. And a zygote is basically a little rubber hose curled up. You see those pictures of, of the little worm. <laughs> okay. Basically. And it, it's curled up. It has a head and it has a tail. But really, it is a tube. It has an outside membrane and an inside membrane. The outside of the tube in the adult becomes muscles and bones, ligaments, that type of thing. The inside of the tube develops into the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system um, with the nerves that run the organs. So out of the inside of that membrane, in the adult, that membrane still covers all of the organs that bud out from it. And the organs and the nervous system are in communication all the time. And just that visual of the inside of the hose and how that whole body is operating from that lining and in constant communication with itself. And that's where the vitality runs through. Okay. So there are, if I go back, to 12 meridians in the body. And each what meridian, each meridian is named after an organ. Okay. So the vitality flows through those 12 meridians and the nervous system and the communication in a concrete way is organs communicating with nervous system and staying in balance. Okay. So we are a flow system. We're, we're a hose. It goes in one end, it comes out the other end. True. <laughs> <laughs> if, there's, if there is blockage in that hose, things get backed up. Mm -hmm. Things get uncomfortable, toxic load begins to get dispersed within the body t as it tries to keep the flow happening. But uh, at the, if, that flow, if, if that flow is disrupted in some way, there's going to be eventually symptoms showing up. If I talk about the gut as part of that inner lining, the gut is responsible for absorbing nutrients to feed the cells and to replace worn out cells. And those cells include the autonomic nervous system. So gut is responsible to bring in good nutrition to maintain the nervous system. The nervous system is responsible for keeping good balance of, of the gut. If there's a problem either in the gut or the nervous system, we're going to have blockage. We're going to have trouble in this flow. Also, the nervous system is responsible for the um, filtration system. So removing of toxins, getting rid of worn out cells. And that would go through the lymphatic system or the liver or the urinary tract, bladder, uh, all of your exit points. Okay. So any problem in, in the exit point whether that be lungs, um, bowels, urinary, uh, skin. skin, 
any problems in there is going to, to um, back up and cause more toxic load in the body. So we're always looking at keeping flow. Mm -hmm. I remember um, some time ago, and I don't know if I, I, I have my own spin, I guess, on it, but um, how intuitive the body is. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, I believe it was a lecture, and the gentleman was saying how we, when we have a toxin in us, we do our best to keep it there. In other words, if we have something in our stomach that wants to get out and we start to vomit, we have a anti-nausea medication oh. we take to keep it there. And then the body says to itself, all right, well, I've only got one other place right now, and that's out through the anus. And so we get diarrhea. Right. And then we take a medication that prevents us from eliminating through that uh, area. Mm. And then it says, okay, well, I have to get it out so I'm gonna have to go through the lungs and I'll get you to cough it out now it's gonna take a lot longer because the other two are really quick in getting it out but so you have this cough so you take an anti-cough medication and then if it comes out through the skin you put a topical cream on so you're holding it in yes. and then the body says all right you're not gonna allow me to get it out in order to save your life I have to build a house for it <laughs> and it creates a tumor yes and I'm not yes. sure if that's accurate or not but it seemed to make sense to me and I just thought well with the body's intuition I can see that practically being how it works. Is it close? I would say so. Because you're taking the pills to suppress the symptoms. Mm -hmm. So you're troubled by the symptom. Mm -hmm. not, not recognizing that the body is trying to expel a toxin. So it's, that's education, that's awareness that, mm -hmm. okay, this symptom is my body telling me something's not right for some reason. You know, have I eaten something that, or have I, been too stressed or what's happened that I now have this symptom manifesting in the body and how can I work with the symptom to um, not suppress it but to understand the cause mm -hmm. and and correct that issue so rather than a pill to um, get rid of the nausea finding out why is that nausea there what am I supposed to learn Mm -hmm. And what do I need to do differently, either because uh, the body needs mm, a little better nutrition for the stomach to digest, mm -hmm. or less stress, or, you know, something mm -hmm. is, is... Or how do I eliminate what went in that shouldn't have gone in That's quickly, That's so that correct. I can get back to health. That's right. Everything. Very good. Yeah. I noticed that you have a binder and you've got a few things there, and ah. I wondered if you wanted to touch on maybe what you've brought on that one. I use this binder when I'm, when I'm talking with people so that they have a sense of um, where I'm coming from. And certainly the tube is part of that whole situation. So I, I do go with the continuum. Okay. And I talk about on the continuum we can move towards health or we can move towards death. Mm. There is a point that uh, the doctors will diagnose a disease where there's enough cells that have are under enough stress load that they're showing symptoms specific. Okay. Okay. Um, when the cells are not specific, when there isn't enough of one thing showing, then the doctor doesn't necessarily identify a disease. Okay. So this is actually coming out of a book called Never Be Sick Again by Raymond Francis, I believe is his name. Okay. Excellent book to read. It's good thinking. Okay. Yes. Good. In in that it also talks about cellular malfunction. So the the cells of the body are getting down to a fairly basic load or a uh, unit. And any one cell is a little home of itself. It has a manufacturing plant, mitochondria, and it has a DNA, so that self re replication. It needs tools to keep that manufacturing plant running. That's nutrition. Toxic load can cause a problem with that cell functioning well. When we have enough cells not functioning well, we start getting into symptoms and diagnosis. He talks about six pathways to creating a problem for the cells. So poor nutrition or lack of nutrition in good food because of the soils that we have and, and various things today. Uh, toxins in air and water f in, uh, in the food that we grow. 
psychological stress as another toxin. Physical uh, being not getting enough exercise. This body's meant to mm -hmm. move. So that can cause stress because it's not getting what it needs to function well. Genetic, what we bring in from the DNA of our parents, what we pass on to our children. Right. And medications as the toxic load in that there can be side effects. So that's the body with symptoms that are complaining about whatever they're trying to deal with with the... Um, Very good. So it's a, it's a teaching tool that you use. Teaching tool that Very I use. Good. So when someone comes in, you end up going through yeah. some of these processes with them. And exactly. Yeah. Very good. Exactly. Very good. Well, that's interesting. Yes. And understanding, what is the autonomic nervous system? You know, we, we were introduced to that in school, but it didn't, it didn't have any meaning other than just getting past that exam. Right. Yeah, it didn't register with us. No, but yeah. it's, it's everything about what we're doing in life. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's another one of those life skills like economics that we don't teach in school anymore. Mm. Uh, that never gets uh, uh, taught at its potential so that we can look at things differently. Correct. You know, of course, we're, uh, we're in an economically driven society. And so if things aren't economically f viable, they tend to be pushed aside. Uh, that tends to be what makes the uh, world go round uh, these days. Yes, but uh, uh, as each cell, as each individual, if we don't know how to handle the economics of our own home, mm -hmm. we're like a cell that has got toxic load or not sure. enough nutrition. Sure, yeah, it's and a great parallel. We sure. can't function. Yeah. And, and if we don't understand how the system works, we don't even know how to fit in. Right, very good. So I know the last time that you were here, we uh, talked about where you were located. Uh, this time I'd like to, is there a phone number where people can reach you as well? Yes, 905-962-8787. Um, okay, mm -hmm. very good. Well, that's great. Well, I, I certainly look forward to seeing you again and uh, learning more about this. It's uh, uh, okay, extremely on. interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very this much. Great. Yeah, bye for now. Bye. Join us. Catch the bug.